Hi guys, it's Denise and today's video will be about something a little sad, but hopefully it's a little helpful to people. Um, so recently, if you read the description box in my last vlog, you will know that my um, half siblings mother had passed. Not my mother, but the mother to two of my um, father's children had passed. And it was not overwhelming to me, but um, it did bring up the subject of grief. I know that people really struggle when a loved one dies or like passes away or just is taking a turn for the worse leading to death. But uh, again, uh, some, some people need to know that um, on your worst day, you're well enough to live. On your best day, you're well enough to, you're bad enough to die. So really, my thing is just live each day like it's your last. Love people like it's the last time you'll see them. I know it's hard to um to put that into fruition, but it's really worth a try, you know. But I wrote down a couple notes, so I'm just gonna call this segment Grief 101. Um, I don't know how long I'll be doing this YouTube thing. Hopefully it'll be rewarding or nice. And this video hopefully will really reach people. Um, but I know people pass away. Everybody has their time. So I may be doing an update. Hopefully it won't be anybody close to me. But just new thoughts that I have on the subject. Okay, so basically if anyone is watching this video and they have typed in how to deal with grief or just come across this video on the internet but if you lost someone recently or long time ago or whatever and you're still trying to deal with it I just first want to express my condolences and I just want to start off by saying why I personally think that people feel grief or sadness when people die I feel that people feel that because um during your life that you have with them or at the time that you know them you build a connection with them and like you build a connection with them and once they go away I feel like a little piece of you crumbles so the sadness is actually you the connection that you have with them going away so if anybody can understand what I'm saying but it's just like you know a little piece of you I don't want to say dies but a little piece of you you and them it goes away you know and I'll later express how you can rebuild those pieces from broken pieces so hopefully I don't get teary-eyed I'm already getting a little you know but um, I just want to express one of the times that I really felt grief for like the first time um, Okay, I first felt real, true grief and sadness over the death of a loved one when my great aunt, which is my great, which was my grandmother's sister, my mother's aunt, my aunt's aunt, and her name was Sue, her nickname was Dixie, um, she was just really the, just, mother of the family, like, she was just, I don't, I don't even know, like, just really amazing. Okay, so she was just the mother of the family. Just, she can, she cooked the greatest meals, gave you the best advice. You know, all my life I knew her. And, um, she was just really a big part of my mother's life, too. So, you know, and just her and my grandmother just, like, looked like twins. Um... I wish that I could include a picture, but I don't have that type of software to do that. But, you know, as time progresses, hopefully I will get that type of software. But anyway, um, basically, I went through several stages um, of grief. I know there's like a set stage, but I don't think nobody goes in that order. Like, this is the order that I went into. I first had denial about it because, um, basically, 
she had three the reason for her passing was um she had leukemia which is the cancer of the blood she had it for about two years before her passing um in the last year people really comforted her you know but she was just living life still you know and she had her daughter that really took care of her you know basically uh her grandmother and my aunt went to go see her like in the last few days of her death and they said joy is not looking good and you know me like i'm just like an um an optimist whatever i'm like y'all are just putting one foot for her in the grave like it can't be that bad like what are you talking about you know um so then i went to her house and then it was supposed to be just like um just like a you know, just come to see her. Even though people said that she was doing bad, I was like, okay, I'm going to come to see her. And, oh my god, um, like, I came to see her, whatever, and literally, like, I went from seeing her, you know, she was saying she was in a lot of pain, but she was still, she was still herself, but then I saw her. She was laying in her bed, unconscious, struggling to breathe, attached the oxygen tank, her eyes, both her eyes just looked swollen, just her skin color just really darkened. I was just shocked, but then as soon as my grandmother got there, you know, that's, Sue was just basically like her mother and her sister, so my grandmother like immediately broke down or whatever. Me, I was just like just in shock because I went from saying y'all are tripping when y'all talking about like she's um like y'all are tripping like what are you talking about like y'all tripping and then um I went into the living room because a lot of people had gathered there because I guess people were like these are her last days so I went in the living room and then I just started thinking and then um basically I was just such a shock because I'd never seen my grandmother cry like that. Like, my grandma's like, she is crazy. Like, she's just very strong, you know, doesn't really, she's like, oh, I don't care. And just for, to see her break down, it made me break down. And then some other people in the living room. And then out of everyone there, like, a lot of people were there that didn't even know her, you know. But I don't want to give you a full story because I don't want to make this video like very long but I just broke down and what really made me break down was when they brought her into the living room and they put her on a hospital bed um there was a caretaker there it there was a caretaker there and um that was our last night and it was December 31st New Year's Eve that was also my brother's birthday so he wasn't there um, and basically what happened was my, my cousin, which is her, um, daughter, she basically called the pastor to first to pray for the family. And then after we got done praying, whatever, um, she was just like, um, y'all know she's a church going lady and you know, she already picked out an outfit. I tried my best to act like, oh, outfit for what, but. I knew what the outfit was for. The outfit for her burial. So, but all the denial I, I did, that just like really just made me just completely just, just break down, you know. I was just, it was just so crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, I saw that my grandmother was um completely hysterical about it so when we she died on and also it changed me it didn't you know it, it was my outlook on grief because I've never saw someone pass away so literally um I saw her pass away we all gathered around her her and then the caretaker was like she's taking last breath breath so um she uh passed away right in front of her eyes so it was, it was crazy.
crazy. So then when we got home, is that a razor? Oh my god, someone left a hair razor on my on my sink. I am sorry. Anyway, um, basically, I got to the point of acceptance because she lived a good life. You know, we all go that way. And she, opposed to a lot of other people's deaths, she li she did a very comfortable death. She got what she wanted. Loved ones surrounded by her and passed away in her own house. And basically, I'm at this point, like, I'm still crying because, not crying, like, but, like, I'm still, you know, a bit emotional because, I don't know, like, when I talk about stuff like this, you know emotional for me but oh man obviously I just want people to know that it's no set way for you it's no set full of book of instructions to get over grief um everyone has their own way of dealing with grief um what got me to the point of acceptance no one can truly get to the point of full acceptance because it's someone I hope this doesn't make anyone sadder, but it's someone that you know, see, you can see them every day, once in a while, however long, that you'll miss, and it's just a miss till the day of your death, and the day, I'm a believer that, to the day that you die and you see them again, so that's hard, so that's a lifelong process, but I just want people to know, and I know it's hard to hear, but to anyone out there who's trying to avoid the pain of grief, um, I just want you to know that self-destructing is not the answer. Um, in the words of The Fault in Our Stars, they got this from a book, um, pain demands to be felt. So, either you run away from it, it's going to be a time where that pain, that loved one, it could be your dog, it could be anybody <laughs> I mean, that has to be felt. But also know that, that um, the moment a person dies, their legacy begins. People, it's crazy, people are more, sometimes people are more famous in death than in, like, look at Marilyn Monroe. Someone... She could have just been a random blonde actress, a random blonde actress, but someone decided to take her legacy and I don't want to say market it, but make it into something, the classiest actress of all, you know? So if you love someone, make sure that you keep their legacy together. That's your job. That's how you can keep their spirit going. Don't. I know it's hard because when that person dies, they don't do anything anymore. They're not doing life anymore. But it's your job to keep them alive. The day you die is not the day you close your eyes. It's the day that people stop talking about you. So, if you felt a strong love for a person, keep talking about them. And keep strong because y'all can do it. Thank you.